What's up, everybody? This is Jason Drollo. Welcome to this episode of The Adapted Lens. So over the years, I've had a lot of people ask me questions about exactly what they should spend their money on uh, when getting into photography. What should they spend their money on a camera or on uh, lenses? And a lot of people have told me that the advice they've received is that they should buy experiences, spend their money on trips to exotic locations. Um, and I don't think this is great advice. So a lot of people have told me that uh, they've received the advice that they should spend their money on uh, trips instead of gear. So take your money and go to uh, Iceland or to Antarctica or somewhere crazy like that to take pictures. And I just think this is terrible advice. To me, I think that advice leads down a road of frustration. All right, so you go and you buy an entry level camera and you spend $5,000 to go to Iceland. And the only other pictures you've ever taken are with your smartphone. You land, you get there, take a bunch of pictures that you think are awesome, you come home and you review them, only to find out that your ISO is wrong, your aperture is wrong, your autofocus is bad. And that's not saying just go and read your instruction booklet after you buy your camera and then jet off to some faraway land. I think it's deeper than that. I think the key is to learn to love where you live. So like I said, I'm at Matanzas Inlet. It's a, a park kind of near where I live and it is a great spot for bird photography. Would I love to be somewhere like Bosque del Apache right now, uh, taking in the pictures of uh, snow goose migration or something super exotic like Iceland or, or Antarctica, taking pictures of penguins? Of course. Uh, but I think as photographers, we need to learn to love where we live first. So if you show up in some amazing location and you take a bunch of pictures, but you've never done that where you live, how are you gonna even know what composition you should take? How are you gonna know what good light is? How are you gonna know what things you should focus on or eliminate from your composition? I think going without the experience gained by shooting here at home is just a mistake. And yeah, you can go online to Instagram and see a bunch of photographers' uh, takes on those locations, but I think this brings us to another one of the big issues facing photographers in today's world, and that is that the more pictures taken, the more we all look the same. People that are spending all their time and energy learning photography by looking at Instagram are just imitating the most popular photographs on Instagram. They're not coming up with their own ideas. They're not coming up with their own angles. They're not learning how to take photographs. And while it is exciting to visit someplace amazing like Yellowstone, Yosemite, or even Iceland, uh, unless that's your backyard, I really encourage you to think local. If you can make your hometown look amazing, just think what you can do when you get somewhere as awe-inspiring as those places. Also, I encourage you to think beyond Instagram. You really don't want to spend a lot of time looking at other photographers' work just to try and copy it. What you want to do is be inspired by it. And there's a big difference there. You can be inspired by their use of color, their use of light, their interesting take on composition. But I strongly encourage everyone to not just go try and duplicate a shot or go to the same location as they did and take the exact same shot. Now, of course, lighting will be a little different because you're not going to go on the same day. But the reality is, is that those same shots over and over and over again are really working to homogenize photography. Additionally, instead of spending money 
consider spending time instead. I know this is not something anybody wants to hear. It's certainly easier to open up your wallet than it is to practice. But at the same time, they say practice makes perfect, although that's not really true. Practice does make permanent. And if you practice consistently, you will get better. And sometimes it means going to places that aren't even all that exciting. But keep in mind, what's mundane to you might be something that somebody else has never seen before. If you live in Iowa, the sight of a sunrise over the Atlantic is probably a fantasy of yours. At the same time, if you live in Florida like I do, big mountains and snow-capped peaks are certainly a fantasy. So like I said, learn to love where you are. If you have beaches by you, learn to be an amazing beach photographer. If you have mountains by you, learn to be inspired by the mountains local to you. If you have cornfields, great, you can make amazing shots of those. Anywhere in this great country, or really anywhere in this whole world, you can take amazing inspired photographs. But you're not going to do it by copying somebody else. And sometimes that photograph that you think is just a meh photo turns out to be one that you absolutely love. I look back at my photo library and some of my favorite photographs were taken right here where I live. Now you don't have to take my word for it, but I can tell you from my own personal experience, traveling before you're ready with photographic gear that you don't completely understand only leads to disappointment. When I was back celebrating my fifth anniversary, my wife and I decided to take a trip to Alaska. I know it's a dream for a lot of people. It's a location that a lot of people fantasize about. Uh, we were lucky enough to hop on a cruise ship out of Seattle and take a trip up to Alaska. But you know how many photographs I took and how many of them I consider good? I'd only been shooting for a couple of years at that point, and I wasn't really good at the things I knew how to do. I took photos in poor light. I took photos with bad focus. I took photos with bad composition. I took photos because I could take photos and memory cards are cheap. But that doesn't mean that of the thousands and thousands of photographs I took on that trip, I came home with more than a handful that I even considered decent. That's pretty disappointing for someone who fancied himself at the time a pretty good photographer. But I realized pretty quickly that I had a lot to learn. Fast forward about three years and we found ourselves in Utah. It's such an amazing state with a varied climate and habitat that you can really be surprised no matter where you go. We started our trip in Park City, Utah and hiked mountains that in the winter are snow-capped peaks and famous for their excellent skiing. And then made our way down to the valleys of Arches National Park and Canyonlands National Park. In the 10 or so days we were there in Utah, I took about 5,000 photos. And I know that sounds like a lot, but compared to Alaska where I took a similar number of photos, I could definitely say that the difference in keeper numbers was dramatic. Of course, I had become a better photographer. I had been shooting all that time in between. With that experience, I knew exactly what I was looking for. But additionally, I worked hard to avoid the stereotypes, such as the very famous arch at sunrise in Canyonlands National Park. And so I encourage you when you start taking pictures to practice, practice every day. Take pictures at home, take pictures of your wife, take pictures of your kid, of your dogs, of your yard, of your neighborhood, of your block. It doesn't matter, just take a lot of pictures. Sooner or later, you're gonna start taking some pretty good ones. And all of a sudden, you're gonna start seeing like a photographer. So the next time somebody tells you to spend your money, not on gear, but on experiences, Instead, how about you spend your time on practice? It doesn't cost you anything, and it's gonna to lead to much better photographs. So in addition to local parks, you can also come to zoos. Right now I'm at the uh, Florida Alligator Farm in St. Augustine, and it is an amazing place to photograph birds. They have a uh, native bird rookery here. Uh, they come free and wild and uh, nest in the trees over the alligators because the alligators provide protection from predators like raccoons. So it's like shooting a fish in a barrel here. Um, although I don't know if I've ever seen a fish in a barrel. Um, these birds just come back and forth building their nests and, and starting new families. So it's a really cool opportunity to photograph birds that you might not see in the wild um, so easily, although they are wild birds. 
And the best part about coming to a place like this isn't necessarily that you're going to get too many portfolio worthy shots. You can't come in before sunrise because the park doesn't open. You're not here at sunset because the park closes. Um, but it's great practice to photograph birds, especially birds in flight, because they're constantly flying. Like I said, they're building nests. So they're up and down, back and forth, building nests. It's really cool. You get to see really amazing mating behavior, things you may not necessarily see at a park or at a wild in a wild place. You can come to these uh, these kind of alligator farm or to a zoo and really have an opportunity to photograph things that uh, that are pretty amazing and and it's a great way to practice so if you're gonna spend money maybe that's a great way to spend some money so one of the other really amazing things about staying local is that you get to meet really cool people I just had a really nice conversation with a gentleman who's out here on the boardwalk sharing the same passion as I do of wildlife photography and I uh, just got to chatting and, and uh, turns out we're from uh, near each other originally up in New York and it's just a really cool way to build a community and I think isn't that what photography is a little bit all about anyway, is building a community, sharing your stories. Um, we were chatting about how if you get a group of photographers together for breakfast, they'll be talking about things that nobody else would understand, like storage problems and camera lens issues. Uh, it's a unique uh, situation that we get to share together. And so doing it locally uh, keeps those stories in your town. So that's it for this episode of The Adapted Lens. Just remember to invest in yourself first. Spend time practicing, shoot local, learn the things that you need to know for your next big trip before you head out on it. And I'll see you next time.